Thanks a lot, Rob. They call this building the Cathedral of Basketball in the state of Indiana. We're inside historic Hinkle Field House in Indianapolis, the home of the Bulldogs of Butler. And tonight, uh, Butler resuming that longtime rivalry with the Musketeers of Xavier. Hi, everybody, along with Stephen Bardo, the former Illinois star. I'm Mike Gleason. It's always great to have you with us. And, Stephen, tonight we get a chance to showcase two of the higher scoring guards in the Big East Conference. Yeah, we get a nice showcase tonight of some great players that don't get a lot of pub nationally. Samaje Christian is one of the more creative guys. He can take over a game, he can create for himself or his teammates. Kellen Dunham, known as a pure shooter, has added that off the bounce to his game, is a very good rebounding guard as well. Well, Xavier snapping a three-game skid on Saturday, beating Providence to solidify their hold on third place. And as Rob just mentioned, Xavier, 6-4, and four, Butler, 2-9, and nine, and Chris Mack at the shoot-around this morning saying, that means nothing. Yeah, there's too much uh, history between these two programs. Xavier knows how good Butler is. They've had five leads in the second half of nine of their losses. And to me, Xavier on the other side is a team that can make a deep run in the tournament. They've got size, they rebound the basketball extremely well, they shoot the three very efficiently, and they have a guy, Samaje Kristen, that can take over a game. Second meeting between the two schools, uh, Xavier winning the first one back in Cincinnati as we check the starting lineups. Joining Kristen in that starting lineup, uh, Kristen Martin and Stainbrook all averaging in double figures, and D. Davis, uh, number two in the league in assists right now. And for the Bulldogs of Butler, you see Alex Barlow, though, he's starting to play uh, Bryce Cotton numbers as far as minutes. 40 minutes in five of the last eight games. Dunham averaging about 17 points a game. Woods, number one rebounder in the Big East Conference. And Andrew Schrabisch, the freshman, getting another start after coming off a 24-point game against Georgetown. Brandon Miller in his first season, a 1,000-point score when he played for the Butler Bulldogs. And Chris Mack in his fifth season, First three, of course, so making it to the big dance, missing last year at 17 and 14, and desperate and determined to get back to the big dance this season. Yeah, and I, I think that they will. They're on pace right now. They're starting to really hit their stride after that three-game slide that went over Providence. To me, Providence is a team that's going to be battling to get in the tournament as well. So big game for both teams here. Eric Stenger getting the start again, uh, controls the opening tip as you take a look at the series history last year. Very tight ball game. But Butler closed out the regular season with a victory over these Musketeers. This is Kristen with the basketball. Very important that Samaje Kristen tries to get his other teammates involved early. Davis out of Bloomington. Martin pulls the trigger, and Stainbrook's there for the rebound. Stainbrook, uh, the number two rebounder in the league between uh, behind Woods, goes out of bounds, and it stays with the Musketeers. Stainbrook has a good nose for the rock. Doesn't finish as well like we just saw there. He's got to be able to finish a lot better, but he gets his hands on a lot of basketball. Over the last three games, Stainbrook averaging a double-double. Such a big body and a very underrated passer. When he gets the ball on the block, and you have to make a decision to make. If you double team him, he can pick you apart with the pass out of the double team, or he can go one on one. Xavier averaging 74 in the victory over Providence. They only scored 59, but played some solid defense. Kristen with 14 on the clock. He's fouled. He's going to the line. Gonna get two shots, so he was uh, on the line or inside that line, and here's a young man who's really, really improved his front row shooting. Yeah, because he was struggling uh, under 70% in the non-conference, but he's really picked it up. And that's gonna be a tough matchup for Kyle Marshall to try to stay up with Kristen on the perimeter. He's a willing defender, Mike, but not not quite used to chasing a, a lead guard. That's that's a, a different matchup for him. Stenger runs down the rebound, and it goes out of bounds. It's going to be Butler basketball. Stenger touched it last. You know, talking about that Providence game on Saturday, 59-53, to 53, right after the game, Ed Cooley said it was a rock fight. Moments later, Chris Mack said it was a street fight. And uh, these two teams have had their share of battles over the years as well. Oh, yeah. Butler's known as one of the more physical teams in college basketball. Has been for years. And you know that any time you match up with them, you've got to bring that physicality. This is Dunham. Dunham held the two points in the second half uh, back in January. Davis starting him again. Shravis 
little give and go, and the shot doesn't go down, and Stanbrook pulls down the rebound. That's all right, though. That was a good offensive possession by Butler. Got a shot right at the rim by Woods. Just didn't fall. This is Martin. He's doubled his scoring since Big East uh, conference play started. Went from seven, averaging about 14 points a game now. Davis. And a good box out. That time Woods comes up with the rebound. Really hard double team on Stainbrook on the post. Made him get off the block. He was still able to make the pass to Davis, but good double team by Butler. Oh, traveling is it for Dunham. As, uh, he had his mind made up. He was taking it to the rim. And a Butler coming in averaging just ten and a half turnovers. See Dunham was going to challenge Stainbrook at the rim. Got a little tangled up there, but like his aggressiveness. A lot of traffic down there, but that doesn't seem to uh, deter him. This is Barlow. Another travel. That's back-to-back -back travels uh, for Dunham. And we mentioned ten and a half turnovers, Stephen. Now they only had eleven against Georgetown, and uh, Brandon Miller was saying we just made too many mistakes, and it wasn't necessarily turnovers because eleven's not that egregious. But it's always different things each game. They're so close they just can't get over the hump. And yeah, that that tells me they have a lack of a true leader and playmaker. Somebody that knows where the ball needs to go at each possession down the stretch. Because they've been in almost every game. Christian pulls up, pops out. Stainbrook with yet another rebound. And he sticks it back in. Oh, and Stainbrook gets his feet set after an offensive rebound. Butler doesn't have a shot blocker to really challenge him at the rim. Xavier really trying to discourage Butler on those pick and roll sets. Barlow pulls the trigger, knocks down a three ball. We talked about it, the Iron Man, Barlow, really not going to come out of the game if he doesn't get in foul trouble. Back in January in Cincinnati, Barlow hit the first shot. It was also a three, and Stenger losing some muscle inside. Yeah, but that was an assist once again from Stainbrook. Big fellow averages over three assists per game. He had six against Georgetown, and uh, every coach you talk to during the shoot arounds, they're impressed with uh, how he can pass out of the post. Well, Stainbrook, he knows the double team's coming. He's tall enough just to hold it over his head, Mike, and not lose his balance. Travis takes it hard. <laughs> Goes down. You know, Stephen, the first game here against Lamar, he only had like 10 minutes, but you could tell he felt like he belonged. There was no uh, intimidation factor. He wasn't nervous. And he has a great IQ. He's going to be a good ball player. Well, he's a lot stronger than he looks as well. You saw that time. He, he initiated the contact and still was able to finish. This time it rattles in for Fillmore coming off the bench uh, against Providence and coming off the bench again tonight. I like Isaiah Fillmore. He's a guy with a great feel for the game. He doesn't have to score a lot of points. They don't run any offense for him. But when the opportunity presents itself, he can capitalize. Solid game against Providence. Eight points, eight rebounds off the bench. Steal by Christian. He had two big, big steals late in the game against Providence. It goes the distance and lays it up. <laughs> so IJ going to fifth gear, getting up the floor, getting to the rim, and he's got the size and the strength to finish with his offhand. That's what makes these NBA scouts salivate when they watch this young man play. Shrabbis outside, knocks down a three. He's averaging 15 on the three-game road trip, and he's got five already. Martin's got to be a little bit better on that post feed. That was a lazy post feed. It took Stanbrook out of position. Inside 15 minutes, uh, Christian with the steal. Well, Samaje, one of the quicker guards in the Big East. And when he gets in this area, he knows exactly what to do with it. Welcome back to Fox College Hoops presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by 
New York Life Insurance Company. And Stephen, time now for today's uh, New York Life uh, Keep Good Going stat. As we mentioned, Matt Stainbrook uh, made the Big East honor roll this past week, averaging 13 and a half points, 10 rebounds, and three assists. Xavier, of course, would love to see him keep that good going. So he's got an inside presence to go along with Pete Davis, Samaj Kristen, and the rest of the Musketeers. They don't have any weaknesses now. You know, they can hit you inside out. So he's that efficient. Tough to beat. Stainbrook, they're catching a breather. The X-Men opening 0 for 3. Since then, 4 for 4. They lead it by 1, 9 to 8. First game back in January, 79-68, the final score. Moments after the game, Chris Mack said anyone who saw that game knew it was a lot closer than that. It was a battle. As most of these matchups are. Dunham off the dribble. You know Dunham was patient until that opportunity. Looked like he forced that a little bit because he's drawing so much attention from Xavier. He's still got to be patient. He can be a decoy to open up things for his teammates. Miles Davis on the floor along with Jalen Reynolds. So Reynolds uh, serving the two-game suspension. Came back Saturday, played very well. 11 minutes, five rebounds. Looked very aggressive down in the post. D. Davis pulls the trigger, doesn't go. He's been struggling with that shot as of late, but they clear another 35 seconds. Well, there's Fillmore, and you just mentioned Jalen Reynolds getting to the rim, putting a lot of pressure on the interior defense of Butler. Davis for three, doesn't go. Long rebound, Woods. And Coach Mack, you see him clapping his hands. He's happy about that. That's a wide open look from three because of good ball movement. Marshall gets inside, misses the shot. The rookie, Shravis, keeps it alive. Hey, Reynolds got away with a little bit of bump on Kyle Marshall right when he was trying to finish. Dunham from downtown. Well, you can see what Justin Martin means. Huh? You have to chase him to the point where you can uh, smell the type of gum he's chewing. <laughs> you never know when he's going to launch one. Inside, a lot of traffic, uh, but Reynolds uh, gets the bucket anyway. Oh, Jalen Reynolds able to finish, but he had Samaje along the baseline. Surprised he didn't look up and swing it, but good result for Xavier. Got him off the dribble again. Rolls off. Here come the X-Men now. Well, you've done him. You gotta trust it, that your teammates can score as well. Nice bounce pass inside, and Fillmore missed the shot. We'd love to have that one back, and this uh, Bulldog crowd doesn't like that call. So they slapped out of bounds by Xavier, but they're gonna say Xavier's basketball. Now they're gonna change the decision. It's gonna be Butler ball. Right there, Fillmore usually finishes that. That's that's the correct call. That's definitely Butler basketball. Nice job of changing that call. Jim Burr, uh, Jeff Anderson, uh, Bob Roski wearing the whistles and the striped shirts here in Indianapolis tonight. Tell you what, Jim Burr was calling games when I played. <laughs> so his body may not be as agile, but he knows what he's doing. It was just a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. A couple of decades. Elijah Brown pulls the trigger. He's fouled. He'll have two from the line. Around the uh, young freshman from Los Angeles, 84% uh, shooter from the strike. So Martin, averaging 14 points a game from uh, North High School right here in Indianapolis, picks up his second foul. You know what I like, Brandon Miller, and bringing these subs in the game and allowing Dunham to relax a little bit, getting Kyle Marshall a, a break. Just getting these guys settled down because Dunham was really forcing the issue on the offensive end. And, let him go back and get composed. You saw the coaching staff over there reminding him, look, you got to trust your teammates. The operative word, as you said there, getting a break. And uh, Brandon Miller not quite as deep as Xavier. Of course, uh, Roosevelt Jones sitting out this year. I want to talk more about that injury, too, as we go deeper into this broadcast. Definitely. But how he injured it over the summer. Kristen will shake and bake, gets the bucket. <laughs> Little Houdini egg. Now you see me, now you don't. Samaje Kristen getting 
like his teammate Miles Davis, some little jazz here and there on the basketball court. Very nice move. He's played well all season long, but as we go deeper in the season, Stephen, it looks like Kristen's confidence is just soaring right now. Playing so well. First outing back in January against uh, Butler, he had 20 points, eight assists. Well, the beautiful thing is he can play off the basketball or he can run the point guard position. D. Davis is in the game. It makes it a lot easier for him without the ball handling duties. And at the next level, he'd be playing point, right? I mean, yeah, he, he played point, but he could also swing over in a pinch at the two position. Eric Fromm almost lost the handle. Barlow was shot ready that time. Just bobbled the pass a little bit. Seven on the clock now for Elijah Brown down to five. Brown. Shoots the air ball. Thought he had a couple of extra seconds maybe for a pass. Ten and a half minutes to go here in Indianapolis. And right now it's a three-point game. 13-10. Xavier on top. Tomorrow, Big East basketball presented by New York Life Insurance Company returns and number six, Villanova, taking on DePaul. Coverage beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1. Ten and a half minutes to go, 13-10, and James Bell, Villanova, speaking of the Wildcats, boy, this guy really, really had a super week. Yeah, you're talking about a guy that's aggressive, constantly looking for a shot. He's an aggressive rebounder, even though he's a little undersized, but tremendous efficiency on his offensive game. 68%, 59% from long range. That's not, not too shabby. And, that, and, you know, he's getting multiple efforts, but he's... So he's converting at a high rate, so takes the pressure off of his team's defense. And Jay Wright uh, recently going over the 400 mark as far as victory, so congratulations to him. And the sharpest dressed coach in America. I don't think you get any argument about that. No doubt about it. Davis outside. He rattles down a three. That's big for him, Stephen, because he was 0 for 11 from long range over the last five games, despite getting about six assists a game over that period. Well, uh, and, and it was so subtle, but Samaje Kristen dragged the double team out just far enough so that D. Davis had time to get that shot off without the rest. It, it's a subtle thing, but it's, it really shows you Samaje's basketball IQ. Bulldogs with the steal, but uh, Reynolds gets it right back. But James Farr, I, I stand corrected. James Farr snuck in the uh, ball game now. Reynolds is out. Farr is in. Let's go back and take a look. Watch how far Samaje goes to drag the double team out, making Dunham have to come really far to challenge the shot. D. Davis has enough time to release. That's a heads-up play. Very subtle by Samaje Christie. Inside 10 minutes now, and the Butler only 11 field goal attempts in 10 minutes, Stephen. And some of those shots, every game that I've seen Butler play, some of those shots have been questionable tonight, at least early on. But I guess you give Xavier the uh, credit on the defensive end for that. Yeah, they, they're, uh, Xavier's locked in here early because the quality of shots Butler's getting compared to Xavier, not even close. Nice look inside. Marshall at the slam. Good job by Butler finding Marshall along the lane area there. One of the few times they've gotten the penetrating pass into the post. Davis out too far. Far pulls the trigger, doesn't go. Stainbrook almost had another rebound. A nice job by Barlow. Butler very fortunate, excuse me, Mike, to not throw me down too now. Nice job by Barlow just getting it over the outstretched uh, arms of the defense uh, for Marshall. His back-to-back -back buckets. We talk about the tight games the Butler's had this season. I mean, even that Georgetown game, that was a four-point game on the buck 43 to go.
Again, this is trusting your teammates, and look at that pass by Fromm into Kyle Marshall. And then D. Davis has to switch out on Marshall on the baseline. They recognize that beautifully. And with this slow start, Butler's got the ball now with a chance to tire take the lead. So very fortunate here in the first half. Marshall's feeling it. Misfires this time, and Kristen, the guard, pulls down the rebound. Talk about defense, Stephen. As Fillmore eyes the bucket and rolls it in. First time against Providence, Cotton had 25.7 assists. Nine points on Saturday because they switched. They put Christian with his length. Yeah. His length that gave Cotton some problems on Saturday. Yeah, and he, he doesn't look like it, but he extremely long reach, very quick, active hands. From his fires. I think that's the first shot that he's missed since he went to the bench and Travis has been starting. Brandon Miller asked him if it's uh, what he thought about uh, coming off the bench. He said whatever it takes to win. Physical double team by Butler along the baseline. Goes out of bounds. There's a timeout on the floor. 7.08 to go here in the first half in Indianapolis. Four point ball game. Still the X-Men on top. 18-14. Thanks a lot, Rob. Well, that conference is a lot better than a lot of basketball fans they give it credit for. Do you think Wichita State, if they pull this game off, they can run the table this year? You know, it's so tough to say because you know about the Missouri Valley and how tough it is to win on the road. And I, I don't have their schedule in front of me, so I don't know the remaining road games. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult task in today's college game to go undefeated in any conference, let alone a conference that's dominated by juniors and seniors like the Missouri Valley Conference is. Well, it's been, uh, what, 1976, the last time somebody ran the table, right? Uh, yes. Indiana? Yes. And, you know, when, when you talk about Wichita State, people think that they're a, a new flash in the pan. They've been good. <laughs> For a long time. For a long time. Cliff Livingston, Antoine Carr, those guys. I mean, it, it, they've had a great program for years. Very good last year. Yes. <laughs> As they showed in the NCAA tournament. Davis pulls the trigger again from downtown. Hits it right before the clock. So he's got two threes. After struggling the last five games, he's got a little grin on his face right now. Yeah, he had to have a grin with that one because he, <laughs> he had to get that one off under duress. He's going to tell his teammates, yeah, I meant to do that. Xavier just one for nine against Providence from long range, so now they've got two, and they're up 21 to 14. Travis or Marshall should get a touch here. This is Marshall. And he gets it to drop. Yeah, he, he's, too, he's too quick of a matchup on the block right now for Fillmore or Stainbrook. Travis and Marshall combined now five for seven. Uh, the rest of the team one for nine here in the first half. Good recovery defensively by Barlow that time. Like he was going to be beaten off the dribble. Fillmore puts the shoulder down, doesn't go, but Stainbrook's there. And boy, Barlow almost had another one. Nice move. Brandon Randolph, another rookie from uh, Inglewood, the Los Angeles area, gets his first bucket. That's, you know, I said it before in our open that Xavier's a dangerous team. And they have all the ingredients of a team that can make a very deep run in the tournament. So Chris Mack uh, holding down the number three spot in the Big East standings after that victory over Providence on Saturday. And of course, St. John's uh, knocking off Creighton. So right now, uh, Jay Wright and the Wildcats sitting at 9 and 1. Creighton falls to 9 and 2. And very important game for Xavier here because, uh, Stephen, they've got a tough road coming up. Yes, they do. They've got, they've got to go to Marquette and Georgetown. They've got Villanova at home as well as Creighton. So they've got a lot of work left. Once, once they enter that three game slide, I think they've gotten back on the same page. Musketeers with four out of five coming up on the road. Davis again. And the sharpshooter from Bloomington South High School is feeling it tonight. I'll tell you what, 
The ball movement out of the post, out of the double team by the Musketeers is as good as I've seen all season. It's hot potato action with that rock on the perimeter. They're looking for the open shooter. Shader on a 10-2 run. Nice close out by Davis there on Dunham. Dunham with the fade, it spins out. Look on the Musketeers. Boy, Christian just explodes into the lane. Jim Burr with the whistle before the shot. Xavier's getting practice shots. What I mean by that, there's no one in the vicinity of them on their release because the ball movement is so crisp and quick. It's moving a lot faster than the defense can adjust. Xavier doing an excellent job out of that double team. A little travel music inside with the big freshman uh, Jalen Reynolds. We mentioned he played uh, so well on the glass Saturday. That two-game suspension probably did him some good because he realized how much he missed playing with his teammates out there. Yeah, you got that right. And the best motivator is the bench or suspension. And if some guys aren't ready to play after that, you got you got to double check with them because everyone wants to get out on the floor and contribute. This is from Woods. Hop skip at a jump of the lane, doesn't go down. Rebound finally comes up by Fromm. Dunham thought about it. He'll take it from there. I'm going to call the. Uh, is Dunham waited a little bit too long to make his move. 3.39 to go. Chris Mack and the Musketeers by 10 right now on the road, 26 16. All right, thanks a lot, Rob, and Mike Gleason with Stephen Bardo. You know, Saturday, Stephen, uh, the 59-53 uh, victory over Providence for Xavier. The 59 points were the fewest in a victory for them this year. They did it on the defensive end, and I know you've been impressed with their defense so far here. Well, when you look at the stats, Kellen Dunham is 0 for 4, and he's been under duress with every release. Butler's only 2 of 8, and they're being doubled up on the glass, so Xavier's beating Butler 16 to 8 on the glass holding their leading scorer scoreless and shooting 52 percent from the field. This is as impressive start on the road as I've seen in quite a while. Defense was the name of the game for uh, Chris Mack in the three game skid. In the first game against Providence he said their defense was pathetic. But they uh, they really uh, went back to basics on the defensive end in practice and they got it done on Saturday and uh, getting it done again here tonight. Well, you got to remember these guys are 18 to 22 years old and sometimes they forget <laughs> the mission and a real hard practice full of sprints and defensive slides gets their attention again. A little double pump by Kristen doesn't go down and from pulls down the rebound from a high school teammate of uh, D Davis back at Bloomington South. Well, right now. I would say Andrew Travis should get a look. He hasn't really gotten an opportunity in the last five or six minutes. He needs to go to work here. Barlow, he pulls the trigger. Plays high school ball and Moeller High School in Cincinnati. So the two guards, Davis has three threes. Barlow has a couple of threes. Dunham still looking for that shot, looking for that opening, I should say. Well, that would have brought the house down if Woods would have slammed that one down, but he'll get two from the line. I like Woods going to the hole strong like that. Got to set the tempo. They're trying to cut into this lead. He got a nice feed and went up strong with the rock. Convert here on the line. And Butler's right back in this game. I follow one against Jalen Reynolds, incidentally, and uh, Woods a 65% shooter. You know, Woods, uh, we, we both know he leads the Big East in rebounding, but he's a 48% shooter, which is good, but at home he's a 61% shooter. It's, it's amazing how much better he is inside this building. Yeah, I think at 6'9", he may not get the right hotel bed or something. <laughs> he might feel a little cramped on the road, but at home he's quite comfortable. Now, those good Illinois teams that you played on, you probably enjoyed playing on the road, huh? 
Well, I just, I like silencing a the crowd. There's no better sound to me than a crowd going crazy and your team makes a great play and they have to sit down and be quiet. That, that's the sweetest sound in sports to me. The ultimate compliment during starting lineups when you're on the road to get booed. <laughs> yeah. Not that I would ever experience that, but I would think that would be the ultimate compliment. No, you know that. You, you, you've been around the game far too long to not, not understand that concept. We won't go there how long I've been around the game, huh? <laughs> and Davis again. Well, Barlow's like a uh, pesky fly down there, keeping it alive against the, the bigger Stainbrook. Did you go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike. Did you see how quick Deep Davis locked up on Dunham? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. He took the words right out of my mouth. Dunham in the first game only had two in the second half. And he can't get a clean shot off here tonight. Well, that's clean for him. It doesn't go down. Good hustle by Marshall. 90 seconds to go now. See, the thing with Butler, they don't really have a guy that can break the defense down off the, off the bounce. So they have to work so hard to get each other shots. Barlow knocking down threes, taking it to the rack that time. He's got eight. And it's a four-point game. Butler's been able to stay in this game because there's been seven or more turnovers thus far by Xavier. Catch and shoot. Davis rings it up with a three. That's his 37th. His first bucket of the night. So 48 seconds to go, and it's back to a 29-22 lead. Well, those threes can change the complexion of the game, can't they? They really can, and Butler was really clawing and, and scrapping, getting that lead down. And just can't relax against the Xavier ball club, especially from three-point range. Marshall drop step baseline. A little bit short on the shot. I still like that attempt. He and Srabis have been the, the two positive Xavier. offensive guys here tonight. 18 seconds before halftime. Seven-point lead for Xavier. If I don't bring home that box of chocolate. Coming up at halftime, we'll check in with Rob Stone and Bill Raftery out in Los Angeles as they discuss number three Florida being tested on the road and can Villanova lock up a number one seat for the NCAA tournament? That's a good question. Yeah, and you know, you talk about that team. Villanova is so explosive. Player of the week. And they still got some work, though. Villanova still got a trip out to Creighton at Providence. And they host maybe the hottest team in the conference in St. John's right now. It's going to be interesting to see exactly. That's a great point you bring up. I mean, six out of seven, and the one loss they had was to Creighton. And that's when uh, McDermott hit that three. Beat him by three. Three seconds on the clock with Kristen. Eyes up the bucket. Kristen knocks down his sixth points. We played 20 minutes, so 29-22 in 10 seconds. Your thoughts on the first half? Well, just outstanding defense by Xavier. Butler's got to find some other offensive options. Well, coming up right after these messages, we'll send you out to Los Angeles for the Fox College Hoops halftime update with Rob Stone and Bill Raftery. Stay tuned. Everything you love about that. Welcome back inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. There's the numbers after 20, a 31 to 22. The Musketeers on top. Uh, Stephen Bardo, Mike Leeson here. And, you know, any coach will say it always starts on the defensive end. And right now, Kellen Dunham, who's averaging just over 20 points a game in home conference games, he's scoreless right now. Yeah, and that, that's a great job by Xavier, focusing on him and making someone else win the game on the offensive end. They've done a great job limiting their open looks and also shooting 52% on their own. Well, 10 points, that was the largest lead for Xavier as we uh, take a look at the first half highlights. Well, when you don't get easy looks and you can't get anything at the rim, it's tough to score. And so all these shots right here are under duress, 
Summers is shot clock are running down, but just great defensive effort. As you see by Xavier, they're closing out on shots. They're trying to shade Dunham. They're cutting down on uh, dribble penetration, and everything is a forced look from the perimeter, thus giving them an eight-point lead here at half. Well, anytime Bryce Cotton, uh, we all know what he can do for Providence. He had nine points uh, last Saturday. That's uh, anytime you can hold Cotton to nine points, you know you're getting it done on the defensive end. What about the numbers here? Well, they're almost doubling Butler up on the rebounds. You see the shooting, but if, if I'm Brandon Miller, I'm telling my team, guys, we can't play much worse. Our leading scorer is, is uh, putting a donut up, and we've given up 52% shooting. We, can, we can't do anything but play better. Well, the leading scorers, huh? Barlow and Davis. Davis has been struggling, and Barlow, not usually uh, the big-time scorer, but he's got uh, a couple of threes, and Davis has uh, three threes. Yeah, and so some of the supporting role having to step up here in the first half. Let's see if that trend continues. Xavier plus eight on the glass in the first 20 minutes after losing to Villanova by two and by seven to Providence. Little back door doesn't work. Here come the Musketeers. Travis had the right idea. Led him a little bit too far. A little bit too easy that time for Stainbrook. His second bucket. He's got four. See, and that's a live ball turnover that turned into an easy bucket. Xavier really taking advantage of those opportunities here. Butler has such a small margin for error that they can't allow those th things to happen like that. Travis keeps it alive. Brand new 35. Travis had five in the first half, coming off the 24 point game against Georgetown. Travis with this spin against Stainbrook. Left hand doesn't go. Travis tried to put him in the spin cycle, almost got it done with the left hand. Only a freshman, a 2,000 point score in high school. and. Uh, after his sophomore season, the won the state championship. He started working out with Chris Heron. Former Chris Heron, he could ball. Yes. He was a heck of a no doubt player. About it. And they became very close. So Justin Martin, they're out of Indianapolis North High School. Two fouls in the first half, and he's got 25 to 30 family members at the game. So had to be tough to sit in the first half with two fouls. Definitely, because you. I'm sure he was pressing a little bit, whether he realized it or not. You always want to play well at home and in front of your family. Stanger takes it in, missed the shot, but he'll go to the line. Have a couple of chances at free throws. Eric Stanger, never really pretty, but very effective at what he does. He knows his game. Two shots for Xavier. He ended the shoot around this morning with a half court shot. He was the first to sink it. <laughs> okay. Actually, he knocked down two. He said if it's uh, if he has the ball late, see, he's going to try one in the game. Now, this week, you get in the ring, Monday night fights, full card of action, including a bout between undefeated Manuel Tino Avila and Enrique Quevedo. It all starts at 10 p.m. Eastern Monday, only on Fox Sports 1. Your fight hand, Mike. Depends if you make me angry. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's the best response I've heard to that question. Denham still looking for his first points. That wasn't a bad look for Dunham. You know, the defense was present, but he got a clean look, elevated nicely. He needs a layup to go down. That would help his confidence out quite a bit. Just to see the ball go through the net. On a tight game with Villanova here, he had 15 of the final 20 and a double overtime loss to DePaul. He had two at halftime and wound up with 30, so he can explode on you. Five on the shot clock now for Kristen and company. He's going to take it. It's rejected by Woods. Good nice job by Woods using his 6'9 frame to not foul. Another steal by the X-Men and Davis looking for another assist. A little bit too much. Mustard on that pass to Stenger. Davis averaging uh, over five assists now in conference play, which is number two in the league behind Cotton. That's a little odd, his pass attempt, because he he picked it up and pulled it back almost like a baseball pass on a bounce pass. And that would have been tough to handle had it been in the neighborhood. This thing. He's been shooting the ball so well tonight, I think he's a little excited. <laughs> Adrenaline running. 
Travis is going to the line now to shoot a couple of 81% shooting. He was 9 for 13 against Georgetown, even though they lost that game. They said Georgetown really didn't have an answer for this young freshman out of Rhode Island. But he went at them early and often. As a, you mentioned it, a confident young man knows he belongs on this stage. He's got an assortment of moves and really good footwork in the post there. By the time he's a uh, junior senior, he's going to be uh, he's going to be a heck of a player. By the fact that 24 points against Georgetown is the most by a Bulldog freshman since Gordon Hayward. And uh, we know what kind of player Hayward turned out to be. That's right. So Marshall picks up the foul, his second. Okay. Marshall didn't like that call, but anytime you go over the back, that's a pretty easy one for the officials to ring you up on. You gotta be a little bit smarter than that. Christian looking inside. Davis from 15. Fillmore. Foul before the shot. And that'll be the third team foul. Barlow picks up his second, the third team foul here in the second half against the Bulldogs. You know, we talked about Isaiah Fillmore at the beginning of the game. This is fishing. Stainbrook on the inbounds pass. It kisses it off the window. He's got six. I want our viewers to notice the type of shots that Xavier's getting compared to the type of shots Butler's getting. Xavier's getting great looks at the rim, some of them not even contested. Butler, on the other hand, are more like that. Everything contested, very hard for them to generate offense. It's a danger zone right now for Butler. Fillmore on the baseline. Good positioning by Stanbrook, uh, but it's taken away by Marshall. And uh, they're going to call the foul. I thought they were going to call the, the jump ball, but it's going to be a foul. So Stanbrook picks up the foul. He doesn't like it, but that was quite a battle between he and Kyle Marshall on that rebound attempt. Well, he wants to stay out there, but good effort on it. he and Kyle's part there. Right now, Mike Butler hasn't done much to get their home team into the home crowd, rather, into the game. They've got to feed off this home energy. Got to give them something to cheer about here. Well, Fromm tried to do that with the slam, and it rolls off. Hey, I like the effort. Martin, downtown, light it up into three, his first bucket. Brandon Miller jumps up, calls the timeout with 15.47 to go. And just like that, it's a 39-22 lead. Well, off the missed dunk, Xavier taking their time, and Martin trailing beautifully, shooting from deep. And some of the Pacers, Paul George, here in the building tonight, uh, accompanying a former Xavier star, uh, David West. To see his uh, alma mater. That's uh, David West, of course, uh, on the right of your screen right there. And uh, one of the all time great players, uh, West, along with George Hill of the uh, Pacers, who are off to a 40 and 11 start this year. Yeah, this tremendous start with Roy Hibbert in the middle, but David West back in college. Look at those numbers, huh? 17 and 10. Wow. The other night, uh, Xavier took the team to watch uh, the Pacers play Denver, and uh, David West had 17 in the first quarter, wound up with 25 in the game. Yeah, and what he doesn't get credit for is one of the best leaders in the NBA. I mean, he is a, a locker room stalwart and tremendous amount of respect around the league for David West. This could get out of hand quickly. Butler is 0 of 5 from the field here in the second half. They've got to generate some offense from some place here. Talked about Dunham exploding for so many points in uh, so many different halves. This is Dunham now with an open look. A little bit shy. Gets his second opportunity and banks it in. His first bucket. Like you said, he can heat up quickly. 
a time off. A lot of times, the best time to get an open look is off of an offensive rebound. Defense is scrambling. You notice his first shot, I said open look. That closed in a hurry. I mean, that wasn't open for long. A little step back by Kristen. He's got eight. Wow. Kristen understanding he can get in the paint and elevate at any time. Never rushed. Doesn't seem to get flustered, letting the game come to him. Special talent. Yeah, just shy of 20 points a game in conference play now. Shooting 55%. Martin's there to trap. Seven on the shot clock. Barlow outside, too strong. Tenacious defense. Brandon Miller trying to figure this out now with 14.20 to go. Welcome back to Fox College Hoops presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by New York Life Insurance Company. 41 to 24, Xavier on top, and uh, Stephen Barno. Let's take a look at some Big East news and notes right now. Marquette picks up the W over Seton Hall. Georgetown last night over Providence, so Providence now six and six. So Marquette, and Georgetown making a push here. Yeah. Got a stretch run. And St. John's, you mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, uh, the great defensive job they did against Doug McDermott. Uh, they, you know, so now the Big East is becoming jumbled in the middle. You got Marquette right there now, uh, just trailing Xavier by half game. Georgetown six and six, Providence six and six, Seton Hall making a run at five and six. So, still a lot of basketball left to be played in the Big East, and be interesting to see come Selection Sunday. We have six or seven teams in the mix. Great conference as far as parity in year one. And uh, speaking of Xavier, Marquette, Xavier goes to Marquette this weekend. And uh, the Xavier folks uh, wanted us to remind the Xavier fans that game has been changed to 4 o'clock Eastern time. It's Elijah Brown. Brown with the open look. Deep in the corner, too strong, and Davis comes down with a rebound. Butler just can't find the range with Dunham being covered as close as he is. He just cannot shake free and get a good look. Kristen gives it up. Fillmore gets an open look, takes it closer, scores with the left hand. I tell you, I keep saying that Isaiah Fillmore, he doesn't get rushed. He doesn't make mistakes. When he has an opportunity to score, he does. He, he's a willing passer, defender, rebounder. Just a very integral part to Xavier, but he doesn't get a lot of credit. An unsung hero type, huh? Exactly right. Uh, he had a three-game stretch where he hit 10 of 14 shots before going 0 for 4 against Villanova. That's Isaiah Fillmore. Head fake, fundamental, go with his offhand, scoop off the glass. And that, you know, looks like a simple play, but come tournament time, Mike, I'm telling you, Xavier is going to be a team to watch because of the different elements that they bring to the game. They can they can play up tempo, they can grind it out like we're seeing tonight, and they've got a player in Samaj Kristen who can get them a bucket at any time. So different from last year, huh, where they were lacking depth. Exactly right. Here's Phil Moore. He hasn't been in double figures in the last five games, but uh, eight points, eight rebounds on Saturday. I think any coach would take that solid. Nice feed inside to Kristen. He's in double figures with 10. Very unselfish team right now, the Xavier team is. So some of the frustration. Barlow, a very headsy player. You don't see that very often. Now watch Fillmore. He knows the double team's coming. Simple shovel pass to his teammate. Easy basketball. Xavier making it look easy here in the second half. Kristen again gets the bucket and one. So Kristen now with 12 points comes in averaging 17. You know last year where they told him to hunt for the shots because he had to. What I like about his game is he's got great averages but he might he might shoot seven or eight times in a ball game. Exactly right. And look, look at that. That's just not paying attention falling asleep 
And you could tell from the reaction of the Xavier bench, they knew that was coming. So three point play, and number three Barlow picks up his third foul as well. Kristen now gets a breather with 13 points. And Brandon Randolph out of uh, Inglewood checks in. Game slide we talked about before their win against Providence. There is from there getting a, a very easy look, something that they haven't seen a lot of tonight. But Xavier having one of those players' meetings and airing their grievances out and getting everything on the table, clearing, clearing their mind, everybody on the same goal, and you can tell the way they're playing, playing for one another. I want to talk more about that when we come back from this commercial break. 11.37 to go, 48-26. Like it was yesterday, remember that show? Oh, for sure. One of the more memorable times in NCAA tournament history. You're talking about Butler, Stephen, that we went to break. Now you look at the human element. They've had six overtime games, and... Brandon Miller says there's always one thing. It's, it's not turnovers, it's post play, it's passing. It's, there's always one thing that we can't get over the hump. So you look at the human element. When does it start wearing on this team? Because I've seen Butler three or four times this year. And to me, it looks like it's wearing on him tonight finally. I would agree with you, Mike, because, you know, Xavier's had a lot to do with that. But this has been a team, as you mentioned, you know, six overtime games. They've had five leads, second half leads in their nine conference losses. So they've been in ball games. But this one, they just seem a little bit flat. You know, there's not a lot of reserve left. You're playing for a, a program that's as proud and prestigious as this one, uh, and not having success, it will wear on you at some point. Oh, Barlow knocks down another three. That's his third. He's got 11 in the ball game. One time walk on. He's getting it done on the offensive end. Coming back the other way, so maybe Butler can make a run. And one thing I want to say, too, about Brandon Miller, I really take my hat off to him. We were talking yesterday at practice, and I said, you know, I said, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts with Oliver, Merry Christmas. But what about if you had Roosevelt Jones? You had six overtime games. Yep. What if Jones was in the lineup and he said, you know what? I'm not going to go there because we don't have him. I'm going to talk about who we have on the floor right now. And, and the silver lining there is they'll have Jones coming back next year. Uh, I thought that was a classy thing to say. He could have said, yeah, we've won at least three or four of those games. Well, those coaches tend to stay with the here and now and what they deal with and the players that they have suited up. And they don't like to make excuses for, for themselves. And, well, Roosevelt Jones is their best player. And the contributions that he would make in terms of uh, he was the assist leader last year. I believe he led them in rebounding. Uh, a very unique score. So, and he's got a, a lot of leadership. So they're lacking a lot from him. You know what's interesting about that injury too? Uh, and I just found this out. He fell on his wrist, and they said his wrist is so extremely flexible, bending back, unnaturally flexible, that if he uh, wasn't so flexible, he probably would have just broke the wrist. But it bent back so much that he tore eight ligaments. Yeah. And that's uh, why the uh, the injury has been such a nagging one. As uh, Marshall misfires from close range. And Bulldogs have 10-15 uh, to go to make their run. You know, you're talking about that injury to Roosevelt Jones with the Big East. Maybe more so than any other power conference in the nation has had more injuries to key players. Uh, you know, you talk about Chris Dunn at Providence. You talk about Josh Smith becoming an Ellsworth at Georgetown. He was a force in the paint. I mean, players that are really integral to these programs. And, you know, but they've, Georgetown's starting to find their groove uh, without Smith. You mentioned Chris Dunn. Ed Cooley was saying that if Chris Dunn had not gotten injured, he said Bryce Cotton would lead the nation in scoring. I believe that. Probably wouldn't have to play 40 minutes a game either <laughs> to get a little bit of a break. He's averaging over 41 <laughs> in conference play. Elijah Brown pulls the trigger from outside. Fromm tries to keep it alive, and he does. Well, Fromm's uh, giving a good effort here. Yes, he is. And looking for a shot, get, being aggressive on the offensive glass. Brown comes back, knocks this one down into two. 
He's their top scorer off the bench, and that's his first field goal. He's got four in the ball game. And these guys that you see Elijah Brown, he's kind of frustrated because he hasn't been able to find the range, but you, know, you got to get it done on this end. It, they can get some stops and close this gap a little bit. So they hit the five minute mark, they can get within 10. It gives themselves a chance. You can't get it back all at one point. Oh, what an elbow. Taken away by Barlow. How many times have we seen that tonight? He does not mind mixing it up and getting into the fray. Woods gives it up. Marshall on the baseline. Just won't go down. It rims out. Marshall gets a second chance, and that doesn't go down. Looks like the uh, the lid is on the rim. It just won't go down for the Butler Bulldogs. It's been that type of year for them. And those were good looks, good effort, but no bucket. So Brandon Miller, who's a thousand point scorer, played his first collegiate game in this building with uh, Southwest Missouri State when he played for Steve Alford. Then he led the Bulldogs uh, to the Sweet 16, now trying to get things going in his first year as the head coach. Now, Saturday, UFC Fight Back returns to Fox Sports 1 for a full night of epic bouts, including a matchup between the middleweights, the Oto, the Dragon Machida, and Gaga Rosazi. The action begins at 10.30 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Those UFC fights, I'm a, I'm a fan of the pugilistic science, the regular boxing, but UFC, those guys are tough. <laughs> I would not want to fool around with any of them. That's a good point. That's a whole nother level. So the next time you're in a establishment, don't don't lip off to a guy that's uh, it's one of those fighters. Yeah, you know what though, Mike? I can't lip lip off. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Martin. That's one for the uh, 25 or 30 family members here from Indianapolis. So Martin slams one down and uh, we'll take it to break on the slam by Justin Martin. Well, Justin Martin out of uh, Indianapolis North High School, averaging 14 in conference play. Uh, he had two fouls in the first half. Had to be a little frustrating. 25 or 30 family members here watching the game. And I didn't realize until you pointed it out after that last slam, I guess uh, he got an earful from Chris Mack. Huh? Yeah, he did. He kind of hung on the rim a little bit for emphasis. I mean, Kyle Marshall, see, he's already gone. He wanted to hang on there because he was having a little tough time scoring the basketball and kind of exercising some demons on the rim. And Chris Mack let him have it. <laughs> Elijah Brown knocks down the, the free throw, 84% shooter. You know what, though, sometimes, and you, you don't want players to be disrespectful to their coaches, but I just like to see one time a, a player say, Coach, do you know how it feels to be up there on the rim like that? <laughs> let me hang a little bit. Let me get let me get some love. Well, Mack could play. He goes, what, six? Six three, six four. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I'm no. Sure he could dunk he back could, in his day. Yeah, but he may not have been able to dunk on anybody. He might have got <laughs> okay. dunked on, but <laughs> okay. he may not be able to get up like Martin did that time. This is Barry. This young man, they say, has a lot of upside as well. Not getting a lot of minutes his freshman year, but at six ten, he puts on some weight. He can really stroke it. Grandson of Easy Ed McCauley. He's got the, the great bloodline. Marshall loses the rock, gives it up. Four seconds now. Barlow's going to have to crank it up with two. And Barlow almost had his 4 3. Here goes Martin. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Butler, so it stays with the Musketeers of Xavier. Strong move to the hole by Martin. No hesitation whatsoever. Didn't get the finish, but. Xavier constantly putting pressure on the Butler defense. Tries to explode past the rim. Elijah Brown doing a good job of denying him a simple layup. Attack, attack, attack. Uh, recently, uh, Chris Mack had Aaron Pryor, the former boxer who lives in Cincinnati, talk to the team. And they talked about when he was a world champion, how he was always in attack mode. 
Oh my goodness. And Maybe he, that's what Martin was thinking about there when he attacked the bucket. He and Alexis Arguello, do yeah. you remember that fight? Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Because I remember I was an Arguello fan and Aaron Pryor just ate him alive. Martin, corner pocket, doesn't go. And selfish play by Xavier, even though a missed shot. Got another open look. Still by far, 6.35 to go now, 52 to 33. Butler coming in averaging 71 points a game. Uh, right now, you got to tip your hat off to Xavier. I know he keeps saying it, but they were locked and loaded tonight. They did not come in here thinking they were playing the last place team, the Big East. They knew they were playing Butler. And they're used to a dog fight when they come in here. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, close last year, we mentioned uh, that was a uh, two point game with 43 seconds to go. Butler pulled it out 67 to 62. And earlier this year, it's very close right down the stretch as Elijah Brown, top uh, scorer off the bench. Uh, he's got eight, six of those eight here in the second half. That was interesting that Dunham, we haven't seen much of Dunham here in the second half. Now, and I, th I think when you know you're talking about Dunham, he was pressing so much tonight. Xavier's keyed on him so well. Boy, Fillmore on the spot at the right time, and uh, that's what he brings you right there. So we mentioned the eight points, eight rebounds uh, by Fillmore Saturday. Now he's in double figures for the first time in the last six games. Efficient, strong, just Johnny on the spot here tonight. Well, Xavier, the last time they had a three-game skid was in the Bahamas. Uh, they bounced out of that and they found their intensity. They won eight straight and ten out of eleven. And coming off the three-game skid, beating Providence, uh, Chris Mack was saying we just had to regain some of our identity that we lost a little bit. And uh, the confidence during the three-game skid was tarnished just a little bit. And as you mentioned. Very astutely in the first half. That's my friends is a tough schedule right there. That is a tough schedule, but the way that Xavier is playing right now, those are quality opponents to only bolster their resume. I think they're solidly in the tournament. But you start to play Creighton and Villanova, Red Hot St. John's of, of an emerging Georgetown. Marquette is now back into the race. They've got a, a gauntlet, but if they come out of that. On the positive side going into the Big East Conference Tournament, this is a dangerous ball club, especially when they can defend the, the way that they've defended tonight. Chris Mack. Open with three straight trips to the Big Dance, the Sweet 16 in 2010 and 2012. And it's going to be interesting how deep the Big East can go with uh, you got Xavier obviously you got Villanova and Creighton uh, but St. John's playing very well you mentioned Georgetown Marquette making a, a push right now what do you think of the first year how deep can they go as far as the big dance well I, I like the, this league in terms of their depth and, and quality teams and you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see five teams get in and depending on what happens down the stretch Kristen fouled so he'll be going back to the line uh, Kristen Five times a member of the Big East honor roll this year. Last year's A-10 Rookie of the Year. You know, 18 years in the A-10 for Xavier. He was the only Rookie of the Year, which surprises me. Because Xavier's had some good players over the years. I agree. Tremendous program and success in that conference. But this young man right here is, he eats up so much space on his strides. Like, if you look at him from the side, he doesn't look like he's going fast, but he's leaving everybody in their tracks. And, Got that Greyhound build and strong, wiry strong, and knows how to play. Mentioned Kristen being the A-10 Rookie of the Year. Kellen Dunham, the A-10 Rookie of the Week, four times last year. Dunham back on the floor now, averaging 17, and uh, right now Dunham with two points. It's one field goal here in this ball game, scoreless in the first half. If you're Brandon Miller at this point, you're looking for your team to stay within the concepts. Run your stuff in the half court. Try to get the open looks. Step back by Dunham. Doesn't go. The long rebound pulled in by Barry. 
Elijah Brown, he'll take it without hesitation. Knocks down the three. So Brown's got the hot hand with 11. So Lisa getting a, one player and starting to get some confidence, get into a groove. What this is, uh, this league is gonna be something. I talk about a team that can go deep, the Creighton Blue Jays. He didn't talk about them, but you know, it, I think nationally it might have taken a little luster from them to lose to St. John's, but that, that's because people don't know how talented St. John's is. Elijah Brown, he's got 14. Dunham's cold, so Brown says, Give me the rock. Yeah, you talked about uh, earlier St. John's and, uh, and Car Sampson. I mean, 25 points from McDermott. Okay, I get that. Even though they played a good defensive game, but eight minutes and 40 seconds without a shot from McDermott. Now that's pretty good defense. I mean, eight minutes and 40 seconds. If you would have told me that, I was a bit crazy. Yeah, but you know what that indicates to me is that people are face guarding him. I mean, when you get a, a, an opposing team to say, I, "I've got to face guard this guy. I can't let him breathe," that just shows you that. Dermott's been one of the best players to play this game ever. Not just this season, not just in, in the Creighton program, which has been extremely successful, but his numbers are gaudy. Martin, suddenly he's come alive now. Justin Martin from right here in Indianapolis, uh, nine points. Well, this is a, quite a performance on the road. By Xavier. There's that stroke I was talking about with Barry. He said him, he's 6'10, but he's I tell you, he's got a good feel for the game and he maneuvered on the three-point line to get open there. It's his first three for the uh, young freshman this season. Nice kick out. And it rattles down. That's a uh, three ball for Brandon Randolph. Now you get a kick out of this, you know, at the top of the broadcast when Rob Stone threw it to us. I said, This is the cathedral of basketball here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. And you're talking about St. John's. D'Angelo Harrison uh, told the Mark Fratto, the media relations director, before the game when he played here, he watched Hoosiers eight different times. <laughs> and you always think of Hoosiers when you, you walk into this building. Well, I was waiting to pick up my car, and I'll finish the story when we come back now. A minute 39 to go. No worry, it's a good story. It has to do with, with Hoosiers. <laughs> Save your bike 20. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Always sharply dressed. Minute 39 to go, 64-44, and uh, I didn't see this coming, uh, Stephen. I know Butler's had a lot of close games, but right now let's take a look at the Land Rover player of the game, and Samaje Kristen, no surprise there. You know, he made it look so easy. He let the game come to him. They were focused on the defensive end, and it set up their offense, but that was the move of the game right there. Then a little Houdini, now you see me, now you don't in the land. Samaje Kristen showing you why he's one of the better guards in the country, not only the Big East Conference. 15 points, 6 of 11 shooting. Uh, usually he doesn't even take 11 shots in a ball game, and he still averages uh, 18, 19, 20 points a ball game. I just think that's why Xavier's so dangerous. He can go for 30 if they need him to. He can take over a game, and there's not many guys in college basketball that can make it look as easy as he does. Inside look. Left-hand stinger doesn't go. Oh, before I forget, we're talking about Hoosiers and Hinkle Fieldhouse. I was at the hotel. I was talking to a nice gentleman uh, waiting for my car in L.A., and uh, we started talking about Hoosiers, and he said, you know, I was in that movie. I said, no, you were He said, yeah, I was. He said, I was James Schenck, number 34. I made the final pass to Jimmy Chitwood. His name was Darren Fish. Okay. And I thought that was pretty cool to, to meet someone who was actually in the movie Hoosiers. Yeah, because that's iconic. I mean, I... Anybody who loves basketball, I'm sure has seen that movie multiple times. I know I have. And that's it. I, I, I'm kind of like D'Angelo Harrison. I love coming in here. <laughs> I told Brandon Miller earlier this year, I said, uh, someday when you have a big, big game coming up, you should march uh, Gene Hackman out here right for the game without telling anybody. Yeah, get a tape measure. Get on the bench. Yeah, the, the rooms are 10 feet. <laughs> Final 30 seconds of this one now. 
So uh, Xavier with a trip to Marquette coming up. They're going to go to 17 and 7 and 7 and 4 in Big East play. So Dunham just two points, one of 10 shooting the ball, 0 for 5 from long range. And again, Kellen Dunham averaging almost 21 points a game in home conference games. So Chris Mack puts another one on the left column. They're 17 and 7, 7 and 4 now with a trip to Marquette. Final score 64 to 50. Xavier, Fox Sports Live starts right now.